morning guys. Well, I've been busy building a new quad and um, this quad has been built very specifically for the bike frost system, which I have over here. And um, yeah, I thought as I've just been busy doing this, let me give you a quick run through of what I've found so far and how it stacks up build quality wise, you know, and potentially, you know, also, how does it compare to things like the DGR gear here? Because they're very, very different. Now, first off, what I did is I chose to build a quad from the ground up, specifically for my thruster. And in my case, I've gone for a six inch chameleon, which I built last night. And um, I have to say, the bite frost goes together very, very easily. It's, um, you know, the whole wiring aspect of this really comes down essentially just to a power cable, you know, so positive and negative, and then there's two leads for the serial wires, um, and the serial's used for getting some on-screen display information up. It's really quite simple. You know, there's a little adapter board you can plug in, which you can then tune the camera and set things like the VTX channel, and you got a little Runcam HD camera sitting over here. Um, Unfortunately, I had to print a little 3D printed adapter for here, but that's only because the chameleon here doesn't really, it's not kind of built for taking a camera that small. So I got a little adapter and it kind of, it works and well, it went together very easily. You know, what I do like about it, you've got an absolutely standard form factor VTX board here. It pops in, it works. You know, it takes a standard 5.8 antenna on the back. You know, it's got an MMCX type connector to connect it. Now, if I'm honest, I normally use a Matec board for all of my um, VTXs and all my quads, and you can see I have lots and lots of quads back here. But what I particularly like is that technically, I could get away with just changing the VTX on any of those quads, and I would instantly be bike frost compatible. Um, Clearly, it's not going to be analog compatible, but you know, that's the way it goes. You know, if, if you are making the move to digital, this is quite quite an easy upgrade path. Now, I've not actually flown this yet, as I only finished this today. And if I'm honest, the weather is rubbish outside. It's just bucketing with rain. So I don't think anything's going to happen to get airtime today. But um, yeah, what, what I've found, you know, I've obviously got an HD picture on here. When I power the unit up, it auto-scans and it gets a picture. It, it's kind of straightforward, it works. In fact, I might even do that for you in real time right now, just because we can. So, you notice I'm powering it straight off a regular little battery, and I can plug in on the quad here, a little 1500 4S, and I should, in theory, get a picture. Like what I'm going to do, I'm going to lift this up and hopefully you guys can see over here the display which shows what's going on and through a little bit of balancing and plugging in you'll see immediately what happens it will go along and it should, if all goes well, actually pick up and show a picture Is it or isn't it? Not yet? Hmm. This is the joy of doing something live Shall I turn this on and off quickly? Let me see what happens are probably on the wrong channel from messing about earlier. There you go. Powering on. But oh, there, it's found it now. And off you go. You can see there's a picture, and that is an HD picture moving around doing all of the stuff it has to do. So I'm going to guess that I was probably on the wrong channel from playing around with the channels on here earlier. Now, one thing I do notice straight off, and I'll bring this close to you here. You see all that little speckling that's going on? Now, that's... Clearly, this is the case of it being a one-way protocol. Um, there is some noise coming in, so it's not doing any error checking that's going on. However, what's interesting is I've moved this around to different parts, and then the speckling disappears. So my suspicion is probably because I'm so close to my 5.8 router over here that I'm getting a little bit of funny noise coming up on the thing just because it's picking up and going, oh, I don't know what that is, so it's just a bit of interference. No big issue. Um, I'll see how it performs when I actually get far away and at a field, but um, yeah, that, that doesn't bother me right now. The picture quality is good. 
Um, I've plugged it into my HDO goggles. I can't complain. <laughs> if I'm honest, what it doesn't deliver is the oh my god wow you get with these. Um, the picture quality when you look in these goggles is just fantastic. And um, you know, I, I think what, what's probably the issue there is more to do with the fact that these are big box style goggles, the field of view is massive. Whereas things are a little bit smaller when you're dealing with your um, fat shark goggles. So it is what it is, you know, it's <laughs> at the end of the day, the fat shark screens are a bit smaller. Hold on, let me unplug all of this and I'm going to have to disable the beeper or we'll get rudely interrupted. Joy, there we go. Gone. Yeah, so um, as I say, the, um, the DJI goggles just blow you away with the picture quality. Whereas the Bite Shark, the picture quality is a lot better than analog. I can see there is a lot more detail. I've not flown with it yet. Um, but it just doesn't have that, oh my god, wow. What, what I don't really know is whether or not, I, I don't think there's an HDMI port, no, unfortunately there's no HDMI port on these, what a pity, but um, I can probably get away with using some box goggles and such to get the same effect anyway, you know, it's, you know, at the end of the day this is a question of goggle specifications as opposed to the link. Now, the other thoughts I have in regard to all of this is that the other day I lost a quad, obviously, for um, on my DJI system, and the reason I lost it is due to a hard lockup. That is directly the result of a two-way protocol, kind of, you know, when it locks it goes pretty hard and pretty fast. What's yet to be seen is how the bite frost handles this. Um, I have a suspicion it might degrade a little bit better, but actually I'm going to have to kind of test it and find out because I don't know for sure. We'll find out at the field. And apart from that, it's been kind of plain sailing to set up. I'm a bit disappointed with the length of that cable. It's like, come on, Fat John. Seriously, you know, give me at least a three meter cable, but you know, I've ordered one in. We'll get that sorted out. It's not a big problem. And um, the other thing which is interesting, which I quite like, is it, it appears that the way these antennas are structured is that's a pair and that's a pair, if I'm correct. And the result is that you can put a high gain there and a high gain there and leave the two clovers. So I'm going for two 13 dBi pepper boxes, which according to the manual, assuming I've understood it correctly, means I should be able to get good coverage in one direction and good all round off the top two. So we'll find out. But um, yeah, maybe tomorrow we will get out and fly and see what goes on. And it will be a first time fly of this little six inch, which went together stupidly easily. So yeah, we'll find out tomorrow. Hopefully I'll be able to give you some footage. Cheers guys.